In this video, we're going to be looking at supplementary and complementary angles. So, firstly, what is supplementary angles? Well, they're two angles or angles that add up to 180 degrees. So, 180 degrees. So, that means supplementary angles could include 20 plus and 160, 90 and 90, 60 and 120, etc. So, they yeah, typically they're two numbers that add up to 180 degrees. And the most important feature of supplementary angles is when they add up, they form a straight line of 180 degrees. So 180 degrees is a straight line. And that means when you form, add two of them together, you will get a straight line there. And so it's useful in lots of um, geometry. When you have two lines across such as that, then you're likely to have two angles that add up together. So 30 at 30 and 150 degrees. So with regards to the unit circle, you can see that there are obviously supplementary angles. So if we draw in here the unit circle, then when we look at an angle such as 120 degrees or 150 degrees, so this angle here is 150 degrees. We can see that the supplementary angle is 30 degrees. And we know that these two angles are interrelated. So when we have something that says sine 150 degrees, this is equal to its supplementary angle 30 degrees, sine 30. And they are equal because in the first and second quadrant, sine are positive. However, you can see that the supplementary angles do relate for like cos and tan as well. However, due to change in um, quadrants, this will change their plus or minus. But with regards to moduluses, you can see how the supplementary angles are related. But the main thing to know is just remember the definition that up to 180 degrees. Just so if you see supplementary angles in any word of questions, you'll be able to identify them and be able to solve the question then. So what about complementary angles? So complementary angles add up to, one, add up to 90 degrees. So before that was 180, but now complementary is 90 degrees. So that means the two angles will form a right angle, so 90 degrees. And if you have two, they'll add up. So 60, 30, 45, 45, 85, 5, etc. So there's lots of different complementary angles. The important thing is that they add up to 90 degrees. So this is quite important with regards to trigonometry and you've seen this before with regards to sine and cos. So if you have sine x and then you have cos theta, if x and theta are complementary angles, then they are equal with regards to the first quadrant. So sine x is equal to cos sine x is equal to cos theta when x and theta are between 0 and 90. And that's because they're both in the first quadrant. And if you can, as I've shown before when I was talking about the unit circle, if you have something here which is x, and then that hit there is theta, then this angle here will be x, and that angle there uh, will be theta, and you can work out the different angles. Say that, for example, sine 30 degrees is equal to cos 60 degrees. And that's useful for memorizing the different values. But also, if you're not doing an exact, and especially if you don't have a calculator, then it's very useful to know this. So if you work out that cos 70 degrees is equal to, let's say, a value A, then you automatically know that sine 20 degrees is also equal to A, without doing any further calculations. So this is for the first quadrant, but then it also changes depending on what quadrant you're in. With the third quadrant, they will also be equal. That's because they're both negative. However, when you look at the second and fourth quadrant, the sine x is going to equal negative cos theta. And that's because one's going to be positive and then one's going to be negative. So the magnitudes will be the equal, but the positive and negative will um, mean that the actual values aren't equal. So you need to put negative for the second and fourth quadrant. So what about tan? Well, yeah, if you have tan theta, 
then you have tan x. And theta um, plus x is equal to 90 degrees. So that means they're complementary angles. Then tan theta is equal to 1 over tan x. So it's equal to the reciprocal. So that means if you have tan 30 degrees, this is equal to 1 over tan 60 degrees. So let's check that out. Well, we know that tan 30 degrees is equal to 1 on root 3. And we know that tan 60 degrees is equal to root 3. So summing these values, we get 1 over root 3 is equal to 1 over root 3. And that works out. So the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. What about if we, if you can sum in tan 45 degrees, that's 1. So that means 1 equals 1 over 1. So 1 is equal to 1, which makes sense. And then obviously you can rearrange that formula. So if you have tan theta is equal to 1 over tan x, therefore tan x is equal to 1 over tan theta. So summing in those values we just had before, we could find that root 3 is equal to 1 over 1 over root 3, because the root 3 comes up to the top, therefore root 3 is equal to root 3. So once again, the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So if you're getting the complementary and supplementary mixed up, a good way to remember is that with complementary, you have C, which is corner, and a corner is at 90 degrees. And then for supplementary, they form a straight line. So that means for the S, you can think of that, that as forming a straight line.